Is somebody praying? Is somebody praying tonight? Let there be a resonance of your expectation. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and let's appreciate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The great I am that I am. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. Be thou glorified and be thou honored in Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big clap and a loud shout of praise. And be seated in the presence of the Lord. I welcome you to this first call it an introductory um, stepping into the convention the real um, tomorrow morning we shall be having the healing and deliverance service and then officially opening up the convention with the evening session but give the Lord a big clap of hand in the book of Isaiah chapter 8 and in verse 9 the Bible said, Associate yourselves, O ye people, and ye shall be broken in pieces. And give ear, O ye of far countries. Guard yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Guard yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Go on. Take counsel together, it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand, for God is with us. That shall be our testimony. Go ahead. He said, for the Lord has spoken, spake thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of these people. Saying, say not ye a confederacy to whom these people shall say confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. And he shall be for a sanctuary and for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a gene and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Verse 11 said, God spake to me with a strong hand. I never knew that they used to use hand to speak. God spake to me with a strong hand. So the voice of God is not just sound. The voice of God moves with the hand of God. So you are not just going to be hearing voices in this conference. You are going to be receiving hands. The Lord spoke to me with a strong hand. So don't just look for a sound. Look for a touch. There are words that will be laid on us by God. But in addition to the words, hand will be laid. Concerning Solomon's temple, he said, what the mouth of the Lord spake, the hand of the Lord fulfilled. I believe that was Second Chronicles, First Chronicles 8, 11, there about. What the mouth of the Lord spake, the hand of the Lord fulfilled. So we are about to receive not just the speech of the Lord, but the touch of the Lord. Second Chronicles 6, 4. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who had with his hands fulfilled that which he spake with his mouth. He fulfilled with his hand 
what he spake with his mouth. So the hand of the Lord and the mouth of the Lord walk together. They walk together. The hand of the Lord walks with the mouth of the Lord. You will stand up this evening and you are going to tell God throughout these days I will not just hear a sound I will feel a touch. Will you stand up on your feet? I will not just hear a sound I will feel a touch. I will not just hear a sound I will receive a touch. I will receive the touch on my life on my family on my marriage on my destiny i will not just receive a sound i won't just hear a word i will feel a touch you see i like you to pray it like someone who means it i like you to pray it like someone who means it i like you to pray it like someone who believes it I am not here I did not just come here to hear something new. I came here to receive a touch like never before. I did not just come here to hear something new. I came to receive the touch. Leperida Sakalabino Laparani Kesegila Leperida Siropa Farani Skelemana Lepere Sinamanagala I did not just to hear a sound I came here to receive a touch the touch of the Lord to receive the touch the touch of the Lord to receive the touch the touch of the Lord to receive the touch the touch of the Lord thank you master for hearing and answering in Jesus precious name we'll receive the first word tonight from God's handmaiden Dr. Mrs. Becky Anencha to minister as she leads us in releasing our families in this season of destiny release give the Lord the praise take your seat loving kindness tender mercies father we thank you we say blessed be your name thank you for that introductory word thank you for that light thank you for that insight Lord we look up to you that before this convention 2021 is over we will not just hear a word we will receive your touch thank you father in Jesus name we have prayed somebody say a loud amen is anybody excited to be here say a loud amen I'd like to specially welcome you and we go straight into the word this evening please open your Bibles with me if you can to Ruth chapter 4 and we're going to read from verse 13 we're looking at recovering your marital destiny recovering your marital destiny tonight God is going to cause a recovery of every marital destiny and take you from where you are now to where you are meant to be in the mighty name of Jesus Christ this convention theme shall answer its name in your life in the name of Jesus Christ and let's read all the way we'll read all the way to the end so Boaz took Ruth and she was his wife and when he went in unto her the Lord gave her conception and she bare a son and the women said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord which had not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name might be famous in Israel. And he shall be unto thee a what? A restorer of thy life and a nourisher of thy old age. For thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons, has borne him. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it. And the women in her neighborhood gave, gave it a name, saying, There is a son born unto Naomi. And they called his name Obed. And he is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Now, 
these are the generations of Pharez. And Pharez begot Hezron. And you read all the way down, you come to the last verse, which says, the last verse, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David. And if you go to Matthew chapter 1, you see there from verse 1, and Obed in that genealogy, that says in verse 1, Matthew 1, 1, the book of the generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham, and the genealogy goes all the way down to verse where you meet, and, Je and, and Obed begat, where is that verse? Yes, it, Obed begat, and Jesse begat David, the king, and David, the king, begat, all right, you've taken us back, and Salmon begat Boaz of Rahab, uh, Rahab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David, the king, and David, the king, begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias, and then it goes all the way down, and we know that Jesus is a lion of the tribe of Judah. He was the genealogical lineage of Boaz. What are we looking at today? The restoration of lives, restoration of marital destinies. I'll be addressing both the singles, the married, the men and the women and, um, and see how much we can get that done. Now we see that um, Ruth's life is a very typical illustration of a restored life. A restoration life. Now, what are the factors we see in the life of Ruth? Number one, I'm sure you all know the story of Ruth. There's no how we can read from chapter one all the way to chapter four, but you know the pre preceding story. So now let's look at it. Number one, Ruth was single again. She was single again. I don't know why, who, who is single here and the reason why you are single. Ruth was single again, but God gave her restoration and she was successfully married and God established her life. Number two, she married at an older age. I don't know what age you are here now, trusting God to be married, you have not yet married. I'm here to announce to you that if Ruth could get married at an older age, you are not too old for God to reestablish you or to settle you or to establish you maritally in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ruth had no child for I don't know how many years there's no indication in scriptures she had no child for as long as she was married initially before the husband died she had no child but this is the same Ruth who now got married to Boaz and gave birth to Obed who gave birth to Jesse who gave birth to David who is the genealogical inheritance of the master Jesus Christ beloved this convention is your convention for a turnaround as far as your fruitfulness is concerned in the name of Jesus I don't know what the doctors have said I don't know whether it is a male factor, whether it's a female factor, low sperm count, whether it is blocked fallopian tubes, you try fibroid, you try cyanike, it's cervical incompetence, hormonal imbalance, whatever the spectrum. Today, I am here to announce to you that before this convention is over, your fruitfulness shall be established. If you are a believer, you shout aloud, Amen. Ruth, I said at the beginning is a typical example of a restored marital destiny your own destiny shall be established you shall be by this time next year who God meant for you to be there shall be a recovery of years if there is a believer in the house you shout aloud amen what about Boaz has it ever occurred to you that Boaz was of age did it ever occur to you that Boaz has no record in scripture that he had ever been married? There's no way, there's no indication that he had ever married or ever had any other children. I wondered why he could have been still single at that age. The description of him in chapter 2, in verse 1, the, um, um, Naomi was telling Ruth that she has a relation that is a man of mighty wealth. A mighty man of wealth. He was a mighty man of wealth at that age and was not married. It began to occur to me, you know that his father was the one that married Rahab. 
So probably all the while in Israel, he was stigmatized. They looked down on him. They rejected him. He went to ladies say you that is a uh, mixed blood. We are not married. I don't know which man is here and ladies have rejected you. Today, the last rejection is the last forever in the name of Jesus. God will give you somebody that is many times better than the ones that rejected you. If there is a lady here, they have never come to you or they have always been guilty you. Things have not worked out as they should. I am here to announce to you that after this convention, you are going to be married. The stigma will be arrested. The reproach will be deleted. The anti-marital spell will be arrested and you shall enter into your marital destiny if you are a believer shout aloud amen. amen and so both Ruth and Boaz were in my own terminology borrowing from the senior pastor's words non-entities until they encountered a restoration marriage and then they became some entities your marriage can make you or it can mar you. Those singles that are here, listen to the sound of my voice today. I announce to you, you shall not marry the wrong husband. You shall not marry the wrong wife. You shall not be connected to the wrong person. If you believe it, shout aloud, amen. And if you are already married, I'm here to announce to you, it is a season of restoration. God shall turn your marriage into the best marriage on the earth. God shall turn your marriage into a marriage of destiny. God shall make your marriage a heaven on earth. If you believe it, shout amen. Man. So, what are the factors that we see in the life of both Ruth and Boaz? What are the factors that we see in both their lives? Number one, they were people of integrity. They were people of integrity. These were two mature people that had access to do whatever they wanted to do, but they maintained purity. Their beds were undefiled. They were people who ensured that they were not misbehaving. Don't you remember that there were two of them that followed Naomi from the land of Moab? One was called Ruth, the other was called Opa. By the time Ruth, Naomi said to them, you will go back to your people, go back to your land, go back to your own, and all. Opa took off without looking back. We don't know what became of her. We don't know the kind of lifestyle she went to live as a retired widow. We don't know who it, what it was that she ended up. But you see the record of Ruth. She maintained purity of character, purity of morality, purity of everything. And the same thing with Boaz. Beloved brothers and sisters, as many of you that are not yet married, your catch to have a successful marital destiny is to ensure, like the scripture says in the book of Hebrews, that the bed is on the file the bible says marriage is honorable in all the bed on the file warmongers and adulterers god will judge so you ensure that when you enter into that courtship that relationship in chapter 13 verse 4 marriage is honorable in all and the bed on the file but warmongers and adulterers god will judge when you are in that relationship as you are starting your first agreement is nothing should happen between two of us before the marriage it was one of the things that my husband and I agreed at that time. We said, if you want this relationship to continue and you want it to end the marriage, then we agree that nothing shall happen. And it is a very key factor for the success of marital destiny after the marriage. Today, there are people who are plagued by all manner of marital, do I call it insecurity? You know, there are some words that are raining words. Marital upheavals and marital battles and many of these, if you trace them, go back to some of the foundational issues. And probably if we have time today, we will pray and ask God, Father, forgive every marital wrong foundation and wipe away the consequences. And I believe that the Lord shall grant you victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number two is submission to leadership. Submission to leadership. 
going through in chapter 1, chapter 2, all the way to chapter 3, Naomi kept on directing and guiding Ruth. Said, do like this, do like this. Where have you come from? She, she, she maintained the record of Na Ruth's activities. She was up to date with what she was doing. Young people, listen to me. When mom and dad ask you, where are you coming from? Don't think that it is a quarrel. Singles that are living on your own now, be accountable to somebody. Have a spiritual authority figure that monitors you and is able to keep track of your activities and keep track of your associations and your relationships. Nobody wants to spoil anything for anybody. Everybody who is, who is, who is, um, Yet single, it's so important that you have an accountability partner as well as your spiritual authority. What you hear preached in church is not gimmicks, it's the word. It is real, it is life transforming. Take that word, run with it, hook, line, and sinker. Some years ago, in a singles program, then in area one, in the, in the youth chapel in the basement, I said to them, our advocation for you is in, your, in courtship, no kissing, no hugging, no necking. Eh? They took it to internet. Bad amwa. Those who listened to it and obeyed it, it is paying off for them. Those who ignored it, I don't know where they are and how they are. But beloved brothers and sisters, what you hear from this exalted altar is words of the, of the Lord. Words from scripture that will give you security, give you success, give you God's help, and give you breakthrough. If you believe it, say amen. Number three. Number three is walk while you wait walk while you wait be gainfully employed be meaningfully engaged in productive life there are some young ladies say what is your prayer request marriage 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 hey mommy pray for me marriage pastor mrs pray for me marriage 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 okay what are you doing um now oh i'm not doing anything i'm just trusting god to be married uh -uh. In fact, as you have told me now, I remember my house rent is due. Please, can you assist me? All manner. Beloved, now, while you are waiting, is the time to engage yourself in meaningful, productive adventure. In working with your hands, there is dignity in labor. There is dignity in hard work. Before we got married, you've heard my senior pastor preach it many times. Um, God's servant preach it many times. He, and he said, he, he didn't have much. He had one trouser. I didn't know it was one trouser. I'm telling you. Because he would wash the shirts he had. I also don't know how many shirts though. But all I knew is he was always clean, neat, smart. I know, Sha, that he had one shoe. It was like a military boot. But when he shines it, you can almost see your face inside the shoe. So he would knock it and this is how he used to walk. You know, I don't know whether it is the military shoe, but he still walks like that even without military shoe. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I had friends who thought, is something wrong with you? Why would you be thinking of marrying somebody who doesn't have the whole world now? I think it has proved that something truly was wrong with me. God was very, very right with me. I didn't make a wrong choice at all. <laughs> How many of you agree with me? Hallelujah. I didn't make a wrong choice at all. But I saw something in him. Diligence. Hard work. Whatever he was doing, he was working. He was working. Beloved, eh? Don't be deceived by sweet talkers, oh. Don't be deceived by those that come and say, Hey, baby, you have sugar in my tea, the only mosquito in my net, you know, I can't live life without you. Hey, it's just words, oh, and that's how they'll be using words to finish you in the house, and you'll be dying of hunger. <laughs> Hallelujah. He might not have much now, but you see he's working. Maybe he doesn't have 
have a government job. He's not employed. But you, you, you called him at 7 a.m. or 7.30. Say, where are you? Say, I'm on my way out. I'm going to see if I can get something to do. Aha. Uh -huh. Now we're talking. Not the one you call at 10 in the morning. And he say, uh, hello? Uh -huh. uh, he's just waking up. There is dignity in labor. A hard-working man today will always remain a hard-working man. And God will always bless his labor. It's like a case of seed time and harvest. What you invest today multiplies in your tomorrow and then gives you a future. Ensure that while you are waiting, you are meaningfully engaged. You saw Boaz. He was also waiting to be married and he was meaningfully engaged. He was putting his hands to the plow. You know, he was doing what he needed to do. Sometimes I, I can't understand when a man says, hey, my wife lost her job so we are really broke we need some money can you and i'm like what about you I, 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 i'm sorry please pardon me like i can't seem to understand it an able-bodied young man so why don't you go to a construction site and carry some blocks help with some work do you know that when we first got married my husband the god servant was working three jobs his official work in the morning he would walk close and go to the second place he would walk in the afternoon he would close from there and resume in the other place by 4 p.m and walk from there when he closed around that 8 9 he would take a car then and then he would drive from where he was pick passengers to one end of town pick another set of passengers back go like two three times then pick the last set that would drop around where our house was drop them and then come to the house that is labor dignity of working i don't know if you understand what i'm saying he was earning a salary but he worked in addition young ladies your body is not a commodity you don't sell your body for money don't let anybody deceive you the money from such a lifestyle never mark my words never amount to anything it fizzles away senior pastor preached some messages some time ago he called it is one of those evil money and those evil monies have no destiny i believe that the lord will help us the lord will grant us great grace and wisdom in the name of jesus christ and number four which is the final point we shall be dwelling on in this in this meeting today is um there were people of principles and procedures people of principles and procedures if you look at um that that chapter four where we read of ruth if you look at chapter four when boaz was convinced or he knew that he was going he wanted to marry this lady what did he do he went up to the gate and sat him down there and behold the king's men of whom boaz spake came by Unto him he said, Ho, oh, such a one, turn aside, sit down. That is, he had enough substance in the land that he could sit at the gate and tell people, Come, sit down, I want to have a meeting with you. Uh, Oga, come, please join us in the meeting. He could, are you hearing me? He could direct. So he gathered the townsmen, the kinsmen of his own kindred. And, and, and told them, there's a situation here, there's one of our king's friends that um, there's a law in the land, there's a rule, this is how the procedure goes, blah, 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 blah. And uh, is there any of you that would like to have the first right of taking this lady as your wife? There's somebody that is closer than me, that's procedure. He had an accurate knowledge of principles, procedures, protocols, and he obeyed them to the letter. Beloved, if you are a lawless person, your marriage will also end up lawless. He followed it accurately. And then, at the end of the day, the other person said, no, I'm not interested. You can go ahead and take the wife. It was official. It was legal. A shoe was removed as a token. And it was presented. And the whole of the land knew, okay, so this is the legal person that is accepted to take this woman as wife. And that is how he had his wife. Be a man of principles. Be a woman of principles. Don't just do things anyhow. Don't let anything go by. That is why, for me, 
I call the book of Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 20 or from verse 22 right up to the end in verse 33. I call it the summary Bible of marriage. In verse 22 there it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Then it describes a lot of things. Then in verse 25, it says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. And then goes on and describes a whole lot of other things. Our time is not going to permit me to go through all those things. But these are, if you can, if you can practice this two commands to the letter as far as it applies to you in verse 33 is the overall summary in Ephesians 5 33 he says nevertheless let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverences her husband ah somebody say amen, amen. every one of you in particular it's not theory for another person. It is you in particular. Please, every man in the house say me in particular. Every woman in the house say me in particular. Not another person. It is me. I must ensure that as a man, I love my wife as myself. As a woman, I must ensure I reverence my husband as if I were reverencing, you know, the authority that God has placed over me. If these two things can be in place, let me ask you now, as a man now, will you beat yourself? That is, you offended yourself, you now carry hand, you are punching yourself. Can you? Except a madman. So if you will not punch yourself, then why would you punch your wife? If you are hungry, would you look for food to eat or not? If you have only one loaf of bread, will you not share it with your wife? Anything you want to do for you, or anything you want another to do for you, it means that is what you should do for your wife. Wife, obey your husband. Submit to him. Let him have the final say. Let him be the leader of the house. Anything that has two heads is a what? A monster. You can't be the head and the husband is the head. Your family, your household will be walking around in town like a monster. What will happen? When people see the monster with two heads, what will they do? They will run from you. Reverence your husband love your wife that is the summary principles and commandments of scripture for husbands and for wives jump up on your feet this evening as we lift up our hands and begin to talk to god in the name of jesus i want you to ask god this evening you're you're single you're single again you're not yet married you're of age you have past age you are within the age bracket ask God father I I know that if you did it for Ruth if you did it for Boaz you can do it for me lift up your voice and pray lift up your voice and pray husbands and wives here tonight tell God father help me to take time to study Ephesians chapter 5 from verses 22 all the way to the end and let me apply it to my life Lift up your voice and pray. Father, help me to apply that scripture to my life. Let me love my wife. Let me reverence my husband. Let me be submitted to my husband. In Jesus' name we have prayed. We're going to be receiving the ministry of the Asaphites as they take us further in the service. Please, you may be comfortably seated. You are God, you are not just big, oh. you are not just large, oh. Can we all be up? you are a great God. 
seat. What a mighty God you serve. Please step out as you hear your name. Igaya Victoria. Mwaya Victoria. Ashazi Musa. Mwaya Hassan. Igaya Victoria. And Ashazi Musa. Please step out if you've heard your name. People of God, celebrate the King of Kings. If you are trusting God for a testimony, do it bigger and bigger. Hallelujah. Permit us, you know, this is a very gargantuan um, sanctuary. People are coming from 300 meters away. Ghanaian Victoria. Please uh, confirm your name and tell the church what the Lord did for you. Praise the Lord. My name is Iganya Victoria. I want to testify to the goodness of God in my life. It all started like this. There is this growth that has been at the right side of my ear, for, of my face, for almost 15 years now. So the growth started just like a boil. And uh, after some time, it starts protruding out. So I was, it becomes a, an issue of concern to me. I, I went to hospital. I was administered administer drugs. But after some time, the, it kept on protruding, getting bigger and bigger, to the point that it becomes a point of attraction to people. Each time I go to the market, people start asking me, what is the problem? Won't you take it for surgery or whatever? So I became so concerned, it became a, a point of concern. So actually, I joined this commission 2018. So it was there before then. So when I came to this commission and I started listening to testimonies of growth deflating, fibroid melting, I see this my growth as, no, as nothing. I, I call it infinitesimal growth. So I now say this growth must go since I'm privileged to be here. So I keep trusting God. Each time the senior pastor declare concerning growth, I keep claiming it by faith. And it happens like this, to cut the long story short, or before then, I also went to hospital, sometime this year, around February. So the doctor told me that I should, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the basic thing is for me to go for surgery. That, but the surgery can deframe my face. I said, no, I won't go for that because I don't want anything to happen to my face. Then I will continue in my faith. I believe in God. To cut the, the long story short, yesterday right. after the service, in the evening, I, I, I started feeling some, a, a drop, an ointment dropping from it. I was like, I went to the mirror, so I tried to, to touch it, so, because it actually has a surface. So I was trying to drag it to some extent. All of a sudden, an, a, an object that looks like a yolk, a, a, a yolk but smaller than, than an egg yolk, yolk, came out. In short, it was so, so, so terrible. I appreciate God because... The pain, once it, immediately it came out, the, 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 the growth deflates. And all the pain, because it was paining me and itching me, everything seized and it melted down. I don't want to take it for granted. I appreciate it because it has been my long awaited expectation. And I believe that as God has done this, order of my expectation and that of my siblings will come to pass in my life. I want to appreciate God. Praise Master Jesus. Give the king the praise. 15 year, years growth. The money growth dematerialized on that powerful word that came from God. One year, Hassan. Hassan. Please tell the church your name and straight to point Lord did for you. Okay, my name is Nyawa Hassan. Uh, I want to thank God for what God did in my life last year, November, during the night's vigil. I, around October, I came to the altar for mama's prayer, for mommy's prayer concerning my marriage. And uh, I went back to Taraba State and I saw the convention uh, advertisement for November. So I decided to come back. I was not actually having much money, but 
like I saw myself in the crowd, how God delivered me. So I decided I was coming back for the convention and I came. For want of time, our sister for 19 solid years was confronted with the spirit husband who came every day, every night to molest her. And as a result, within those 19 years, 15 suitors have asked her hand in marriage and at the point of paying the bride price, she would turn against them. To the extent that one of them had even paid everything and they were looking forward to the D day when she said she does not want again. And that is after the demonic husband had appeared to her, molested her every night. So she was in that condition. One night, she saw the servant of God in the dream who woke up to her, pulled her up, and said that marital spell is broken. Then she came to the church the following week, as God will have it, as the servant of God was walking along the eyes, spotted her again, brought her out, and prayed for her. She said she fell under anointing, and she saw that same giant being that used to molest her walk out of her. Since that November 2019, she had not seen, 2020, last year, she had not seen the man again. Now, she trusted God for a settlement. Somebody had come, and the church is currently counseling them. And she had returned to give praise to God for saving her. That is Sutta number 16 in 19 years. Help her. Every embargo placed on your life, finally, in this conference, it shall be lifted. In this season of encounter, it shall be lifted. If you believe that, shout the loudest, amen. Shout the loudest, amen. The camera will show us what was removed from this lady and how the face is now. It's like Ed York, she said. And that thing has been there for how many years? 15 years. Oh my God. Viewers, discretion advice. Thank you. So, somebody give Jesus a big shout of praise. Asher Zimusa. Please confirm your name and tell the church what the Lord did for you. Praise the Lord, everyone. My name is Asher Zimusa. Hallelujah. Sister Asher Zimusa has been a member of one of the Orthodox churches for so many years. And while she was there, her life was battered, scattered, and shattered. She didn't know what to do anymore. One night, the servant of God appeared to her. Appeared to her in a dream. At that point in time, one demon has knife into her chest. And when the senior pastor appeared, he said, leave her alone. She is not your candidate. Thereafter, gave her a paper. Said, go there and get your work. True to type, the following day she woke up, she got a call, and that call gave her a job. And that was the job, celebrate the King of Kings. That was the job that turned her life around. Her life was so transformed so much so that at a point, she bought a house for her parents. Hallelujah. She bought the house for her parents, and that was the beginning of the challenge. Some men walked up to her and said, that piece of land I just sent to your house is theirs. She told them, no, she bought them, everything together. So she invited the development control, and they came and uh, passed the judgment in her favor. The man said, now, the man said, now you have won, we are going to deal with you. We will kill you. You will not live to enjoy this house. They pulled a call across to her, 
threatened her, sent text messages to her continuously. And she retorted about three of them. You don't know where I'm coming from. I am the daughter of Dr. Paul and Nature. He said, Touch not my anointed. Do my prophet no harm. So you cannot do me anything. He said, Okay, we will see. And that was how it was. And one of those days, she saw the servant of God again in a dream, praying for her. This time, she was getting to settle down, get planted in the church. She came to the church the following day. The senior pastor saw her again and canceled the spirit of death. As, as she fell under anointing, and one giant beam black thing walked out of her head. So before this time, she used to sleep on her serine. She would tell her, go and sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. And when she's in her house, she will not sleep. But the moment she enters her car, sleep will come. To the extent that somebody will have to wave her down. Madam, you are sleeping. Stop, stop. You are leaving the road. And that was her condition. Until she had that encounter with the servant of God. And that demon was blasted out. After that prayer, the next day she said she was going for her business as usual. She was involved in multiple fatal accidents. Some were dead, some were injured. But here, our star is healed and healthy, no scratch. By virtue of that uh, prophetic declaration, your word shall come in this service in the name of Jesus Christ. What about the men? The men that say she will see. Uh, we've not heard any from them. We will hear from them very soon. Yes, sir. Anybody looking for your life, their life shall go for you. Anybody looking for your life, their life shall go for you. Anybody looking for your life, their life shall go for you. Shout the loudest, amen, as you take your seat. Give the Lord the praise, take your seat. Hallelujah. Now, just one minute. She was not a member of the church when she had the encounter. Yes, sir. She was a member of an Orthodox church. And go and get your job. The next day, a job came that was massive enough to make her build house for her parents. You are a member of the church. You are planted in the church. You are connected to this unction, connected to this mantle. If God can do it for those outside the house who are not yet in the house, I announce to you today this destiny recovery convention is not permitted to end until your testimony appears yours shall appear yours shall appear shout the loudest amen give the lord the praise as you take your seat hallelujah celebrate the king of kings a bb club offering as i invite the choir for the administration
clap and a loud shout of praise. Father, we thank you for this night. Breathe upon your word. Thank you for what we heard already. Be thou glorified and be thou honored. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a praise and please take your seat. Amen. This is a week of very, very great, massive encounters. And you will not live the same. Any man or devil in charge of light should ensure that we don't have any challenge this week. I say devil because the devil can try to antagonize. The men are not devils. But if you are a man working with the light, ensure that the light works. If the system is working and the light is not working in your hands, come for prayer. Okay, because the rod of Gehazi, the rod of Elisha spoiled in the hand of Gehazi. The rod was normal, but once Gehazi handled it, and I'm talking to pastors so you can take note of some people who handle things where you are. So do everything you can to make sure the system is working, otherwise you are a suspect. The way Gehazi spoiled the rod, and you should ensure that there, there is a speaker everywhere so that they can hear what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. But some of you, are you seeing some light at all? Alright, if you are not seeing where you are as much as you should, I'm sure you should be seeing the screen. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22, very, very quickly and sharply. He said, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. I am speaking on the subject restoring the priesthood of the home. Restoring the priesthood of the home. The Bible makes it clear. that the man of the house is like Christ to the church. If Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1 tells us that Jesus Christ is the high priest of our profession, then it means that the man is the priest of the house. Last month when we had the married and singles program, we made it clear that the direction of the man is the direction of the family. If the house, if the home must walk, the man of the house must be the priest of the house. That is, if the woman has done what she should do or is doing what she should do, there is no family that can function 
according to scriptural pattern until the priesthood of the home is established. What is the responsibility of the man as the priest of the house? Number one, setting the pace for the spirituality of his family. The man must set the pace for the spirituality of his family. As Jesus set the pace for the spirituality of the church, the man sets the pace for the spirituality of the home. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 said we should, we are compassed about it so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which God so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the pace setter and perfecter of our faith if Jesus is the pace setter of our spirituality the man of the house is the pace setter of the spirituality of the home It, it becomes an abomination for the woman, the woman or the children to be the major drivers of spiritual fire in the house. It's an abomination. It's an upside down operation. Where the man is still sleeping when prayer is happening. When the woman is coming to church and the man is angry that her going to church is too much. I have some very, 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 I don't know, redundant, I don't know what kind of name to call them. I've come across men before. When you engage them, you talk, you say, oh no, me, I'm not the spiritual type. My wife is the spiritual type. My wife is the one who prays for the family. Oh, she's a very prayer. She's a very, very, very prayerful woman. That is a very, very useless man. He's a miss man. It's a misnomer of masculinity. If Christ represents the man, then as spiritual as Christ is in relation to the church. So spiritual shall the man be in relation to the family. Man of the house, your wife should be able to take any scripture to you and say, excuse me, sir, I was studying this scripture I didn't understand. Can you shed, shed light on this scripture for me, sir? Your children should be able to bring, not that you are a pastor, that you are the man of the house, you are the priest of the house. I am not saying this to accuse or to condemn. I am saying this so that homes can become what they should be. Please take your seat. And it is not the situation where the man sits his wife down for the next two hours preaching at her. You know the Bible says, wife, submit yourself. It's you they are talking about. When was the last time? It's directly you they are talking. Who are you going to change or impact like that? Listen, spiritual authority is not forced. It is end. You don't impose yourself on people and say, I am the authority here. They can feel it. They can see it. They know it. They know that you have answers to, to give. My children will pick up any scripture passage and ask me any time of the day or night.
every man here tonight and every man watching online i am here to to ask you to rise up and take your position as the priest of the house as the major fire bearer in the place of prayer the major fire bearer in the place of the world your faith should challenge your children's faith in god your faith in god should challenge your wife's faith in god your prayer life should challenge the prayer life of your family your dedication to god your passion that is when it works that is setting the pace in the spirituality of the family is number one number two bringing the family before god at the place of prayer that is a high priestly duty bringing the family before god at the place of prayer you know when the high priest entered the holy of holies in the old testament he had the names of the children of israel written on his chest and he stepped before god to present israel before god samuel was a high priest and prophet of israel look at what he said in first samuel chapter 12 verse 23 he said god as for me god forbid that i should sin against the lord in ceasing to pray for you god forbid that is i am your priest and prophet not praying for you is a sin he said but i will teach you the good and the right way hello husband what i mean is your wife's name is on your prayer schedule on your prayer schedule the day you remember to pray for yourself you remember to present to take your wife before god was it genesis chapter 25 verse 21 or something that isaac entreated the lord for his wife isaac took his wife before god we are not dealing with our generation where you woman if you don't give me a child i'm going to find myself children all right isaac took the case of his wife's barrenness before god until god heard him open it again and the lord was entreated of him and rebecca his wife conceived Is God speaking to anybody here at all? If I did not pray for my wife on a day and my children, it means that day I didn't pray for myself. Yes, it, it means I didn't pray for myself. That is by name. That's I didn't pray for myself. Father, I thank you for my wife. Thank you because she is a fruitful vine by the sides of my house. Her fruitfulness, no devil shall temper. She shall not labor in vain. She shall not bring forth for trouble. Nobody will take her place in my life. One day I opened my, my prayer notebook for her to see my prayer points for her daily. It's almost a breaking down point. Yes. That is if you remember to pray for yourself, for your assignment, for anything pertaining to your life. As priest, you present the people under your priesthood before your maker. Am I communicating? That is if she is not praying for herself, my prayer will sustain her. 
that is, don't be afraid of anybody's bitterness or envy against you. We are there at the place of prayer. You know, one lady went to meet a, the wife of a man of God. He said, I have found who to marry. Pray for me so that we can get married. He said, eh. He said, but there is a problem. What is the problem? He said, but the man is already married. Uh -uh. How can you say the man is already married and you say you found who to marry? You know what the, what the girl answered? What if the wife dies? Go. So there are people who are wishing people's wives or husbands to die. To take their place. There are all manner of enemy forces. All manner of bad will forces. All manner of satanic. That is why there are people who begin to behave. One day the Bible says Satan moved David to number Israel. Joab say, what is the meaning of this? Leave me alone. Who is in charge here? There are people who start behaving. It was Satan who moved in. They, they are not even aware of what they are doing. Somebody will go and resign from work. It's only after his resignation he will realize what he had done. There are people. That's why you don't take things for granted. There are people dying, killing themselves today by voices. Say, kill yourself. Life is not worth it. So you uphold your, your, the people under your priesthood. Especially if you have any future that is significant. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. I'm sure somebody is hearing a dimension of something you never heard before. You are the priest of your home. Trust God for your wife's potential to explode. You are not in competition. Everything God has put into her, let it be made manifested. Let, every, let the children be arrows in the hand the mighty God. May they not miss their target. They will not miss their target in career. They will not miss their target in who to marry. As the priest of the home, you target them at the place of prayer. If we are talking about the restoration of families' destinies, the man must take the place of priest. Am I communicating? Before you wash your wife down and I'm coming to that. Have you prayed for her? Before you insult the hell out of your children, when was the last time you prayed for them? What is the priesthood all about? That is... The place of intercession. You bring your, your family before God in intercession. Number three. What is a priesthood? Can you go over the first two please? Setting the pace for the spirituality of the family. Bringing the family before God at the place of prayer. Number three. Teaching and instructing them in the way of the Lord. Teaching and instructing them in the way of the Lord. Teaching and instructing them in the way of the Lord. We already saw that. First Samuel chapter 12 verse 23. Where the priest called Samuel said, But I will teach you the good and the right way. Genesis chapter 18 verse 18. Abraham, God was speaking about Abraham. He said, I see. From verse 17. Shall I hide? And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him as a priest of his house. He will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord 
to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken, teaching them and instructing them in the way of the Lord. Very important. Yes, you see, I'm the pastor of the church. When I, when I preach in church, they hear. But from time to time, it is necessary to have instructional sessions that are target specific, teaching sessions. Many years ago, when we got married newly, once I got a book to read, I gave the same copy of the book to my wife. In those days, I would read it. I would read it first. Or I'll make her read it because I normally will mark my book. I say, I just read this book from T.L. Osborne. I want you to go through it. I just read this book from Bishop David Oyedeko. Um, Destroying Financial Hardship. I want you to read it. I just read this. The reason is, and then we'll share. And then we'll teach. And then this is what I saw with myself, with the children. The reason is, I wanted us to be on the same page. And my vision in ministry was that if I wasn't there in terms of somewhere I should be ministering, she could be there. And because she has a calling into the ministry. Not every pastor's wife has a pastoral or a pulpit calling. But she has that. And so I wanted us to be on the same page. And the children. It is the priest's duty to instruct. It's the priest's duty to teach. Somebody said, you don't blame them until you train them. You are only permitted to blame whom you have trained. If you have not trained them, you cannot blame them. And it starts from childhood. You know, there are many people who have left the upbringing of their children only to their wives. Just there. Go to your mother. And some, in fact, to their house help. So the house girl is teaching them the principles that has made her to be a house girl. The principles that is why she is where she is in life. Principles of fear. Principles of timidity. Principles of inferiority complex. Principles of low self-worth. Principles of don't aim too high in life. Principles of money does not grow on trees. And then the people are wondering why the children, even though they are very powerful parents, they are yet so timid and have so, so much low self-worth. And they are afraid of a leaf and afraid of feather. There was one girl who made one of our children to almost be afraid of chicken. Until we knocked that thing off. Because she was morbidly afraid of chicken. Morbidly. Mortally in fact. Am I communicating at all? Yes. Your wife is doing a great work. But no matter how good a mother is, she can't be a father. And no matter how good a father is, he can't be a mother. That is why God made father and mother. So those who are two mothers trying to marry each other are wasting their lives. Insanity. Two men trying to marry each other is insanity. And yet they claim that they are going to adopt a child. Don't adopt any child. Give birth to the child yourself. If that setting is correct, reproduce. Your inability of reproduction shows the insanity of the procedure. Am I communicating? Take your seat. You see your child come home with one kind of walking step or hairstyle or something you don't understand. Talk to them. Let's reason together. What's this all about? Not to it. Very brutal approach because that can produce a negative effect. But don't forget. When we 
married newly, I kept on instructing my wife, correcting my wife. She's a medical doctor, grew up in great family, went to university, um, staff school, grew up in federal government, um, girls secondary school, went everything, did some part of our primary school in the United Kingdom. Me, the town I was born, that was where I grew. <laughs> Full time. Primary school, secondary school. In fact, if, it was in, if there was university there, maybe I would have attended. The first time I left town was after secondary school. That is to cross the town. That is, when I traveled to Inugu, that was like going abroad. <laughs> you know? But the local wisdom I had and wisdom from scripture was very relevant for certain instructions. At the beginning, she said, am I always doing everything wrong? I said, no. You are not doing things wrong. You are doing it right, but it can be better. I am trying to present you to myself so that they, when you pass, they can say that is his wife. I'm trying to present you to myself a glorious wife. <laughs> Even till today, when she just stepped out of the altar and I said, do you have any correction from, from what I just preached? Let me know now. Let me know now before... <laughs> I say, I'll let you know later. I say, please let me know now. Am I communicating at all? Okra does not outgrow his owner. <laughs> you, you, you see, pull it down. I see, just, just come down. Just, just come down all the way. Is God speaking to somebody here at all? Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. The priest, the priest, the, 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 the father. Some people are wondering, why are you just talking to the men? I'm talking to the men because everything rises or falls on leadership. What is the responsibility? Teaching and instructing them in the way of the Lord. Number four, blessing the family continually in the name of the Lord. Hmm. Blessing, 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 blessing. Just blessing the family continually. Numbers chapter 6 verse 23 and 24. Speak unto Aaron and to his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless you and keep you. Blessing, blessing. That is, Madam, honey, it is well with you. You will eat the fruit of your labor. You won't labor in vain. The Lord bless you for being a good wife. The Lord bless you for taking care of... Blessing. Children, you are blessed. You are the head, not the tail. In their younger days, I'll go to their room, lay hands on them, pray, bless them in the, in the middle of the night. Step off. My wife is sleeping at times, hands lay. It's the duty of the priest to bless. Many are using the mouth they should use to bless, to curse their wife, curse their children. What a liability wife I bought. Since I marry you, what have you added to my life? And so the more they talk like that, the more redundant the wife gets. There are children who have never heard any kind word from the mouth of their father. Not a kind word, not one. My wife is smiling all the time. Children are smiling all the time. All they are hearing all the time is kindness. Blessing, goodwill. You will do well, you will do well. One of them called me. 
asking some questions this, if, this afternoon around 3 or, or so o'clock. And then well, I answered the question is, and then um, I'm having an exam. All right, in the name of Jesus, you are successful, the head and not the tail. Above only, never been it. You will never be at the back. It is well with you. Blessings. And you two pray for me because I have an exam this week. <laughs> I'm in the exam now. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? Blessing. Blessing. Ble the, Jew the greatness of the Jewish nation is that the pa parents are taught to bless their household officially, deliberately lay hands on their children, on their wife. They keep speaking blessing. The blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Isaac. The blessing of Jacob. So if 100 people have the Nobel Prize, 20 are Jews. 20. The 80 is divided for the whole world. Nobel Prize in medicine. Nobel Prize in physics. Nobel Prize in peace. Or in peace Nobel Prize in chemistry. Nobel Prize everywhere. Blessing, 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 blessing. Is God speaking to anybody here? If you had cursed your wife and your children, go and reverse it. That is not your duty. Your duty is the duty of a blesser. Keep blessing them and see how they turn out. Keep blessing them and see how they turn out. One of my children told, said to me one day, he said, Daddy, do I have any gift? I don't think I have any gift. See, this one has this gift. That one, I say, you have gift. It's coming. In the name of Jesus, everything inside you is coming out. Every potential, every grace. That one who said, do I have any gift? I don't think I know the number of the songs that God has brought through her. Her own. 50, 80, 100. I listened to the song, one of the songs, until song exploded out of me from listening to his, listening to one of the songs that my own child received and wrote. Who said, do I have any gift? Do I have any grace? I said, you have too much. It will explode. It will come out. In the name of Jesus, you will be shocked. Watch out. Somebody say amen. When you function like this, no matter how desperate the devil gets, you deprive him of work. You deprive him of work. I know of a man who rendered the whole of his family useless by, by his mouth. This one is I said, look at this one coming with big head. Is it head you are carrying or coconut? And he will be laughing. Children all rendered useless. Oh, this one going now. You are shower or not? What kind of a, a, a hairstyle is this? Blessing. When you go back home tonight, bless your children. Bless your wife. Bless them over the phone. Woman, bless your husband too because the Bible says concerning the, the virtuous woman, she blesses her household. This is very, very important. And finally, it is connected to this last one. Blessing them continually. And finally, modeling the love and fatherhood of God to them. Modeling the love and fatherhood of God to them. Your children, I said it last time, they can't see God. But as they see you, they must be made to feel the love and the kindness of God. Your wife should see, should feel the love and the kindness of God. Should feel. In John chapter 1 and in verse 18, the Bible said that Jesus Christ, who is our high priest, that we are like as fathers and husbands, no man has seen God at any time, but the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him or he has manifested him. The way Jesus came to manifest the Father to the church, the husband is to manifest the Father to his household. In love.
I was talking to a woman the other day. Whose children are encouraging her to leave their father? Hello? When your own children say, leave the man if you want to leave. I'm not talking of children who are um, graduates now. I'm talking of children that are 10 years, 15 years, 7 years. Leave the man. He is not a husband. He is not a father. They say he is a dictator. That was the word children used for their father. He carried what they used to pound the arm to hit the wife. Huh? He said, this is not a man. He said, he is not a father. He may be a sponsor. He said, so anybody can pay your school fees. Doesn't have to be your father. That's what the children said. He said, anybody can pay your school fees and doesn't have to be your father. That's how this one is. He may be paying school fees, but he's not a father. When I hear those things, I feel so pained. The level to which children, what children are seeing growing up. What children are seeing. Very, very bad, terrible image of a home. Image of a father. Image of family. No, sir, not like that. Not like that. Not like that. Love them. Let them feel the warmth of the Father. Let them feel that warmth. Love them. Love them. Speak good words to them. Children need affirmation. If they don't get it from the right source, they will get it from the wrong source. Your daughters need masculine affirmation. Otherwise, a man can do it for them outside. And then, that goes the wrong way. Baby, you're looking so fine. I like your hair dress. I like your, your dressing. Wow, can, how, many, how much did you buy this? I want to get many of it for you. Can you tell me the secret? What makes you look so fine? Say, it's you. It's you. You are my father. And you are not ugly, so I'm fine. <laughs> well, I'm talking of our discussion. <laughs> it's you, it's you. Just the other day, one told me, say, my father has already told me I'm fine. I don't need any man to tell me. Wow. There are those uh, look at you. Bad boy, bad girl. I am wasting my money sending you to school. Failing, failing all the time. What do you want to do? If you destroy any child, God will hold you. There are those who insulted the best out of their children until the worst came out. You heard what I just said? They insulted the best out of them until the worst came out. They thought they were trying to deal with a snake until a dragon came out. The love. Your wife too. Affirm. Show them that love. I do not believe that anybody can be close to God and not love people. Beginning with the people of your life. I don't believe so. Stand up on your feet. I don't believe that anybody can be close to God and not love people. And that is beginning with the people of your life. Your family. And he have preached very, very brutally. But I heard from God's servant, Bishop David Oyedeko. 
it doesn't matter how far you have gone in the wrong direction a u-turn is possible at any point once you realize let your children have known you as a bad father give them the opportunity to see the other side give them the opportunity to know a good father our children sent to me one time one of the children he said daddy i want to thank you for being a good daddy thank you for showing us what a good home is i say what why are you talking like that i say because my classmate is just telling me what they are passing through in their family hello my classmate was just telling me what they are passing through she's crying for me every day what her mother is passing through what the family is passing through and i've heard from mother i have heard from another and i cannot imagine what people are passing through she said what they are explaining i don't understand because i have i don't understand what what they are talking about that a man is a stranger to his wife and transfers his hatred for the children for the wife to the children so all the way just to thank you for for being a good father and husband to our mother and showing us how a home a good family should be thank you when next will your children say thank you there are those whose children are afraid of getting married because of what they have passed through if it's an ancestral cause break it if marriages don't work in your own family you are the first person to make it work if it's a generational cause break it somebody say amen and the journey is not a destination it's an adventure we are learning every day even now we are learning more and more things how to be better with our lives and i believe that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Taking the lead in spirituality is your assignment. Bringing your family before God at the place of prayer. Teaching and instructing them in the way of the Lord. Blessing the family continually in the name of the Lord. And modeling the love of and fatherhood. Pastor and priest over the church this is extrapolated to the church ex easily easily as the priest of the church your assignment is continuous blessing blessing the people blessing the people blessing the people it is well with you it is well with you. you will fulfill your days you fulfill your destiny dr miss anencia has already preached and talked about the other side talking to women for every woman who heard this message tonight don't go home and quarrel the man and say you see i've been talking to you okay the pastor has said, said the same thing now that is you want to worsen the case for your life don't look down on any man because of a particular message people behave to the best of their knowledge and people fight different factors wife you are the help meet help adapted if a man is going to be a better man, fulfill your role. Help his life. Even though he's a spiritual head of the house, he's a, he's a priest of the house, help his priesthood. Create an atmosphere conducive enough for his spirituality. Help his mind. Help his vision. Be a multiplier in his life not a reducer fulfill your role if the man fails you are also to be held responsible i believe that the lord will help us in the name of jesus christ and for everyone here tonight who is still single how does this all bother you it bothers you because if you are a lady you will know the kind of husband that is a husband can we all be upstanding and in the midst of courtship, you can see telltale signs of who a real man should be. The man is already insulting the hell out of you. You are not yet married. 
then you, are, you know you are face to face with a man that is not a priest. And in case you are going to make any prophetic declaration into your future home, you have points to, to, to make those declarations on. And if you are a single man, you are being shown what you should be. That wrong family you came out of is not an example. You know, one of the greatest challenge is when people perpetuate the failures of their ancestors. I knew a man, medical doctor man. While I was still in medical school, he was already a medical doctor. This man hated with passion the behavior of his father figure. That father figure had many wives, was a drunkard. He hated it. With, he was, I mean, he was telling me himself how terrible this man is. He was like his senior brother or uncle, but it was his father who trained him in school. I couldn't believe my eyes. When one day I traveled, and this man, full-fledged medical doctor, owner of the hospital, was staggering like this in alcohol. He said, so, did you see what they were telling me just now? I don't know. I looked at him. This man, Alcohol is no respect our profession. <laughs> Medical doctor, surgeon. I heard of one, an orthopedic surgeon who drank sote. He left his car at the beer joint and trekked home. It was money he remembered. This guy just standing like this. The same thing you that pained you. He married one wife, two wife, three wife, four wife. That as at the last count. People have a way of perpetuating, and the devil has a way of making people perpetuate the same failure of their lineage. That will never be opportunity. By Wednesday morning, there is going to be a slight adjustment in, this, in the schedule of service so we can achieve so much before we leave here. We'll have the early will I seek you prayer session by 6 a.m. to 7. And then 7.30 instead of 9 or 9.30, 7.30 a.m. The morning session begins. Also so we can maximize the cool period of the day before the sun hits our roof. While we await for a very massive, 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 massive cooling system. Am I communicating? And then after that session that will be end like 10, 45, 11, we have a little break and then have some special sessions. We, young ladies that are battling with the spell of marital delay, it will be confronted and that session should be coming up, I think, by, um, that should be Wednesday morning. Tomorrow is Tuesday, Wednesday morning. Wednesday after the main morning session. People dealing with um, barrenness and fruitfulness issue will be also around the same time. And then we are going to deal with financial issues, moving the business and finances to the next level on the, 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 the following. And then we are going to have a youth on fire session for every young man who needs fire. That will be coming back out on Friday after the morning session before the night vigil. And so I, I'm announcing this ahead of time, but I am saying this because I just mentioned even if it is a curse, let it be broken. There are things that you must make up your mind to break in this season. And they shall be broken. Lift up your hands and lift up your voice. And let's begin to speak to God. Let's begin to speak to God. Appreciate Him for what you have received. Honor Him for what you have received. Adore Him. Magnify Him. Worship Him. Glorify Him. Go ahead and speak to God. Take the lead, O Lord, take the lead. 
voices we are going to pray about three prayers lift your voices and now appreciate God for what you have received today appreciate him for what you have received today liberate the sikobagalaya Galadio Saparadia, lift your voice, open your mouth, speak. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. Ancient of days, Lily of the Valley, Rose of Sharon, Mekadesh, Karen Yesha. We love you. We honor you. We adore you. Blessed be your name. Honor to your name. Worship him. Honor him. Adore him for what you receive tonight. To you be the glory, Lord, and to you be the honor, Lord. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' precious name. If you are a man, you are going to tell the Lord tonight, Lord, help me to be the priest in my home. Whether you have a home yet or you are going to have a home, help me to be that priest in my home. Every other person, Father, help me. To fulfill my marital destiny if you are married help me fulfill my marital destiny if you are single help me fulfill my marital destiny if you are single again you are married before and maybe for bereavement or whatever reason you are not married anymore help me lord to fulfill my marital destiny establish me where i belong you don't have children yet help me to fulfill my marital destiny open your mouth people and begin to speak to god help me lord to fulfill destiny help me lord to fulfill my marital open your mouth and pray la te copa kite pelite perata casa gadagala la te sato rapataza lene mero sike barish le piros pifora tikazi lexta parande cosamita le perita sico bara tekezina le keste febrano sunanila Socomena Tapeca Tala Barato Socomena Tapeca Merica Caso, Merica Caso, Ripaca Tiza, Ripaca Tiza, Lepero Nagata, Lerina, Saka, and the Tabora, Kiko, Tala Galada, the Lagala, in the Kitty, the Tenemi, the Suta, the Paramita, Lerucula, Paramita, the Tadia, the Tadia, the Sora, Malagadasi, Michele Perekina, Saka Galano, Saka Galano. Let me 
Lift your hands now and speak to God and say, Father, Father, I make demand, I make demand on the release, on the release of my destiny, of my destiny in this destiny recovery, in company. this destiny recovery, company. all round release, 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 all round release in the course of this week, in the course of this week, I demand for the release, I demand for the release of my life and destiny, of my life and destiny. Open your mouth and speak to God now. your right hand on your chest, lay the other hand up. Dr. Mr. Nenshi, I'd like you to come as a mother and as a wife who God has helped for 27 years in marriage. Release upon the daughters of God here tonight. God helped you very early. Age 23 and 6 months you got married heading for 24. He says, satisfy me early. Let God satisfy his children early. Men and women. Let families begin to experience stressless marital harmony. There are families, the problem that is happening between them is not even physical. You know, they say the way Satan entered Judas. That devil doesn't want the home to walk for any reason. We're going to pray. Let that yoke be broken. We pray together today in agreement. In the name of Jesus. I pray for every precious daughter of God here today. Every dear daughter, every sister today. In the name of Jesus, I declare that the plan of the enemy against your marital destiny is hereby frustrated in the name of Jesus. Father, we make demands on your help upon our lives. Lord, your word says, oh Lord, satisfy thou me early. I ask, oh God, that the grace for early satisfaction in marital destiny be released upon these people in the name of Jesus. I ask, oh God, every troubled home, receive the peace of God that flows like a river in the name of Jesus. I decree wisdom from above. The wisdom of God, the favor of God, the help of God, the goodwill of your husband towards you as a woman in the name of Jesus. I pray for strategy for your husband and yourself to live together in wisdom and in harmony in the name of Jesus. I come against ancestral curses, familiar curses, anti-marital spells. Today, I break your hold from these lives in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone trusting God to be married. I take authority over that siege of delay. In the name of Jesus, every cause of delay is hereby arrested and you are ushered into your marital destiny today in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you today in the name of Jesus. 
help from above. Yes. Mercy from above. Yes. Grace from above. Amen. Is released upon you. Amen. Everyone battling to have a home that is a quality home. Today, the battle is over. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Husbands, grace to be the priest. Yes. Receive it now. Amen. Wives, grace to be the helpmeet. Receive it right now. Amen. Children, the grace to be arrows in the hands of the mighty God. That grace is released upon you now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Everyone trusting God to be established maritally. Currently single. Your years of singleness are over forever. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Before this week is over, Jehovah shall locate you. Amen. Everyone who is single again, by virtue of bereavement or any other reason, the Lord establish you, establish you, re-establish you Amen. in your marital home according to his will. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every challenge in the home, sickness of children, financial crisis, sickness of husband, sickness of wife that has put families under pressure today these afflictions are over forever Amen. over forever Amen. i call it done in the name of the father Amen. and of the son Amen. and of the holy ghost Amen. the lord bless you Amen. The Lord comes today to mark a new day for you. Amen. Families shall sing a new song. Leto azari atako kobalash. Leke zidi lafaratasoko. Lamina sefredi kalatora patalatete satata. Ancestral curses. Generational anti-marital forces. Fighting the home from succeeding. To ayayayayayaya. Leke peke teke digalaga dagaya. Today, these powers are broken. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Overnight, divine encounter shall happen. Amen. That shall position the home in accordance with the will of God. Yes. So shall it be. Amen. In the name of the Father. Amen. And of the Son. Amen. And of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Shout the loudest, amen. amen. Give the Lord the praise. Two more things we shall be doing for that Wednesday. Please take your seat one minute. So, tomorrow we have 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Ellie will I seek thee. Um, it was very powerful this morning. We shall be having it at the event center down there. Um, and then. Um, you are welcome. Boss will be available to pick some from the entrance in case there is somebody who needs. And then from Wednesday, now tomorrow we have 9.30 a.m. Healing and Deliverance Service is already scheduled. But starting from Wednesday, after the 6 to 7, we then meet by 7.30 a.m. to 10.35 Divine Encounter morning session. And then after that, we have about an hour or so break and then we shall be having 11 30 to 1 p.m for special sessions specialized sessions and then break and return back 5 p.m to 8 p.m in the night for a divine visitation awesome visitation with explosive testimonies that is a schedule that will be running and we shall be running um sessions for singles breaking yokes of delay breaking the yokes of barrenness financial stewardship having what to do to move to the next level in finance and business and then the youths on fire the full details of these various sessions will be announced as, as it goes on uh, tomorrow morning and, and tomorrow evening uh, wednesday morning sessions will be announced and then all the way as we reach up to friday where there will be an explosion in the worship and wonders night it will be the best worship and wonders night you have ever attended in your life Say the loudest, amen. amen. While we are in this mood, I know there are people here tonight, even though we came for singles and married, you have not yet given your life to Christ. Can you quickly stand up on your feet and rush to the front here and let us receive you? Quickly, I'll give you the count of seven. Pastor, uh, I need to, that's right, she's rushing out quickly. Pick your Bibles and your bags and rush forward. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. One, 
Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every step that I take, every moment I'm away. Have your way, Lord. Have, have your way in me. You are tied to an addiction. Indian hemp, marijuana, masturbation, immorality, anything that is a bondage or a yoke in your life, you want to be free from them, quickly rush forward. You want to rededicate your life to Christ also. Come forward. Go ahead. Go ahead. Every moment I'm away. Have your way, Lord. Lord, have your way. Everybody, body, say. Lord, I give you my heart. My heart, I give you my soul. I live for you, I live for you alone. I live for you. I live for you alone. Every moment I'm awake, every moment I'm awake. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Everybody sing, Lord, I give you my heart. Lord, I give you my soul. I live for you alone. I live for you alone. I live for you alone. Place your right hand on your chest, pray this prayer after me and say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Have your way in my life. Forgive me my sins, Jesus. Today I have decided to follow you, Lord. No turning back. Forward ever. Backward never. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. I pray for you today. I declare the hold of the enemy broken. Grace to live for God is released upon you. And I call it done. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Counselors are right here. They will lead you. All right. They will lead you and assist you how to be established in the Lord. God bless you. Give the Lord the praise as they proceed.